hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl is in there williams how are you all doing hope you guys are good hope you guys are fine if you are new to this channel kindly click on the subscription button click on the notification bell to let you know whenever i post any new video and tonight we are continuing with the big brother niger reunion show and of course it's a continuation from what happened last night at the reunion and today we um we still have the mental health experts you know the therapists with them and today we started with Ella, you know, um, Ebuka introduced Ella to the um, therapist, you know. And we are talking Ella tonight, of course, you know, from her issues with other housemates to family to building her career, you know. And the doctor said to him, Ella um, is goal-oriented. She is deliberate, you know, keep auditioning because she has auditioned. Big Brother is not like her first audition. We all know that. She has auditioned before. I think it's Project Fame or something like that, you know. And the doctor wants to know, you know, if her living early affected her in any way, you know, maybe her self-esteem, you know. And also, um, yeah, her self-esteem. And Ella also went on. You know, Ella said, said um, talking about how, how the spotlight, you know, can sweep one away. You know, she talks about the auditions. You know, she talks about pushing herself to go for auditions. She talks about her friends, you know, pushed her to go for um, the audition. I think it's tw in 2012, you know, um, she was the wild card, like, you know, wildcard, they were not like ideally people that were picked, but she was picked, you know, and she thought, okay, this is the golden year for me, you know, um, coming out, people telling her, you know, things to do, not the Big Brother house, coming out from that audition, you know, people telling her things to do, you know, people telling her that she's not really ready, people telling her to conform to a kind of music that she should do and all that, you know, um, not having like a record for two years, you know, and that affected her. She said that recording and nobody recognizing it also, um, you know affected her you know and it sounds like ella has a plan you know she she has a focus to go on you know into the studio to sing to put out you know music to continue to grow you know she said moving on after the big brother niger um show you know that she has made peace with herself you know that she has made peace with herself that she doesn't want to go back to the her that she was before she, you know that her always questioned herself you know she says she's doing things right now you know no need for waiting for you know maybe this producer or this sponsor or anything she's going into the studio she's putting her music you know and um if we can ask her how have you been able to deal with seeking for validation you know from people with your career or with your person you know and she said you know she's still on the journey not to seek validation you know but the doctor also mentioned that it is not a bad thing it is really not necessarily you know a bad thing to um seek for validation from people because as humans we are social animals we we live off each other so to speak you know people will not approve of you According to what the doctor said, he said something profound. He said, people will not approve of you, but they might, they will secretly admire you. And this is something, yeah, I know, I let me digress a bit. This is something I've always known because my mom always said it to me. She said, isn't it, you know what, whatever you are doing, don't stop because don't of, uh, um, ever say, oh, people are not, you know, applauding for me or anything because there are people, those same people you think are not watching, they are watching and they are actually admiring you in secret. And that is one thing that has moved, you know, that has helped me. So the doctor said it and he, he also said that she should focus on those things that matter. So we moved on to Tacha. So apparently the doctor is actually a Tacha follower or has been following Tacha, you know, before she got into the Big Brother house. She saw, he saw her, um, you know, having confrontations with people and all that, you know, and to the doctor, um, he believes that the first time he saw Tacha, you know, he said that, okay, um, from the first time he saw Tacha, he thought, okay, this one is pay playing the CC and t boss script, you know, which is in every season, you always see characters that align. You can always speak, oh, this person is trying to act like this person and all that. But later on, he came to see her true character coming to the fore, you know, um, and later he began to see it, that Tacha is that kind of a person that sticks to her anger. Like, if you piss her off and your birthday comes, she will not wish you happy birthday. She will not, you know, greet you. She doesn't know how to do that. She doesn't know how to, like, you know, 
pretend you know that kind of a thing you know and her past has also shaped her because you know she talks about her mom and also about her uncle you know that didn't really do anything for her when you know her mom was struggling or they were struggling and all that but we still have the gods to put out her mom's picture on his instagram page and for her that doesn't really seem right you know and for her she feels according to the doctor she's the kind of person that um when she needed people they were not there for her you know she has this character of i don't need anybody because for her she feels i will make it through all by myself and by with god on my side and when you have that kind of perspective in life it can be bad sometimes you know and for Tatcha, she do, she doesn't see what any other person can offer her because she can do everything by herself and with God on her side, which is, you know, kind of a very bad perspective. Because um, the truth is, he also went ahead to say that many times we always say people misunderstand us, people with, uh, misunderstand us. But the truth is, we are the ones that make people to misunderstand us. Sometimes we are misunderstood because of what we project to others. Now, um, the, Tatcha, um, the doctor asked Tatcha, you know, if she sees emotions as weakness. You know, he asked her if she sees emotions are weakness, if she believes she needs people. And Tasha went on to say that, yes, in the house, she tries, she did try to max her emotions because it was a game. She doesn't want to, like, come in the place where she will love and trust people and then she will find out that, oh, this person I love and trust, you will not go and put me up. She doesn't want to do that because feelings will complicate and distract her. Okay, and Tasha also says she knows that no one is an island, but she tries to not so much to depend on people too much because anybody can disappoint you you know um that anybody can disappoint you and thus she doesn't want to feel like um she, she doesn't have the expectations on people you know you know she says um right now that her relationship with housemates outside the house has been perfect you know because the doctor also asked her how do you feel with people you know while talking to people and seeing clouds gathering on their faces you know because she's that kind of a person that she doesn't really care you know and she says right now she's working on that you know she tries to put a smile on her face she tries to go all out you know to people so that you know she people see her and they are kind of acting a kind of way she tries to go out of her way to actually you know show them that the toucher you saw on your screens is not really the real toucher you know and she says she she has a very good relationship with her ex-housemates she also said that she wishes everybody or she wished all the housemates happy birthday except for joe and that is because joe and her mom shares the same birthday that is 17th of august and the psychiatrist you know or the therapist try to let her know okay maybe because you are holding on to that grudge you know because of what joe did to you and she said no you know that she said no it's not because of that and also you know she said um ebukana asked her do you believe that the you know the perception people had of you coming out of the house has affected you you know she said yes that her image from the house has extended to her outside the house affecting the way people see her you know and now she's she's been working to change that you know she said um sometimes um she there's this time she met um ella at the i think amvcas and even ella affirmed that yeah that you know she was surprised way Tasha related to her you know and Tasha said yes that it's really really affected her you know and Tasha said um that most of the encounters she has with other housemates in the house back then in the house was like more of a defense mechanism you know that everybody has a way of doing things that yes it might not be the best way because she has learned from it you know that there are other ways you can handle things but um outside the house she she feels like now when she offends someone or she gets offended by someone you know it's either she lets it go or she calls the person up to you know instead of going on social media you know she calls the person up to talk or to talk it out like a girl or a guy whichever one you know and the psychiatrist also went on to talk about touch of titans you know that most times the titans get it wrong they have this whole pro feminism kind of thing you know they have this um when they see Tatcha, they have this um perception you know that is not really true you know and they have this perception you know that um pro feminism women are more powerful like downgrading a man you know that kind of a thing and 
that is not really what Tatcha stands for. And even Tatcha said, no, no, that that is wrong. You know, and also the doctor said that it's good that Tatcha is not allowing people's perception, you know, to affect her, you know. And even though that she doesn't care about what people say, you know, but at the same time, she should care about what people say. And the doctor said another thing that is profound. He said, an unexamined life is not worth living. And he also said that some comments people make are not because they hate you. Sometimes those comments are for you to learn, you know, like um, constructive criticism for you to learn from it and do better. You know, and the doctor said that he actually predicted Tatcha's disqualification long before she was disqualified, you know, and that Tatcha should not see her disqualification as a one day event, that it has been building up, that it has been building up for quite a, a while before, um, she was disqualified you know and the doctor asked her okay how do you feel or how did you feel after you were disqualified and Tasha said okay she was down she needed a few days to herself but one thing that has helped her after this qualification though was the love that she received you know and um what else they talked about um yeah that the love that she received you know and also she talks about how she has been able to channel all those things to you know be a better person and the doctor said something that i feel i should share he said there is something that's called external locus and um internal locus i don't even know if i pronounce it correctly and he said that is okay external locus for example is student that gets 70 over 100 he will say oh i got 70 over 100 but when the student gets maybe 20 over 100 he'll be like oh they gave me so he's being able to take responsibility and learn you know learn how not just to you know move on you know not just to see the good but also see the bad learn not you know apportioning blames know your own um the role you played in making whatever that happened happen so yeah it was quite a lengthy discussion you know so yeah from there we moved on to fraud now fraud according to what Ibuka said he walked into the house with a lot of burden you know more unlike some of them he walked in with a lot of burden his mom was having his surgery her surgery and he didn't even know if what has happened with the mom you know so he came across as this emotional guy throughout the he stay in the house now the psychiatrics or what am i saying the therapist said that he thinks that fraud was a fraud and that is f a f r a u d you know he thinks that fraud was in and at the first glance, he thought he thought that fraud was a, um, a fraud. You know that he played the game really, really well. You know he played into the sentimental sentimental emotions of people, and he played the game well. You know, and um, the doctor also said that fraud should not make the mistake of hiding. You know his emotion. You know he should not. You know make the mistake of being. You know, our acting that he's not vulnerable because people think that men should not be vulnerable. You know, he he came across to him as a guy that wore his heart on his sleeves. He came across as weak because in the Nigerian setting, you know, men are always thought to be brave, real men don't cry, that kind of a thing. And because of that, a lot of people looked at him as a woman rapper. And it's okay not to be okay. You know, according to what the doctor said, it's not a bad thing to be emotional, to be able to tap into your emotional side. You know them even in his attempt outside the house to be a man you know cause of many, many people's comments or opinions he should also be careful so that he will not get it wrong you know that he has you know issues with his inter interpersonal relationship you know that it was an issue for him you know his ability to have in um, emotional intelligence knowing that okay should i say this do i am i needed in this am i supposed to be in this conversation is this the right thing to say this you know those kind of things are what he should learn you know he should work on you know and the, the doctor thinks fraud did not do too well when it comes to interpersonal relationship and also that fraud was often misunderstood and of course he was one of the people that actually you know um filled that misunderstanding you know so fraud on his own part he talked about growing up you know seeing his mom 
how his mom has taught him to be a man and a woman at the same time you know be strong you know be brave you know the nigerian man kind of thinking you know men don't cry and all that but at the same time his mom taught him to be expressive sometimes you know if you're feeling bad let yourself feel that way express it he also went ahead to say yeah because the camera was on him most of the times that a lot of people didn't see other people in the house getting emotional and all that you know he talked about his journey in the big brother house you know having his mom in the hospital having been the one to provide that he has seen that kind of money but because of you know the economy of the country and all that he lost some of it so coming to the big brother house he, he didn't really have much you know so there was this conflict should i stay with my mom or should i come into the big brother house you know and he saw that opportunity and he took it you know um fraud said his housemate or his fellow housemate then saw everything as a game and they tried to bully him but he never stood for that you know but he told himself he was just like that he was repressing those feelings repressing those feelings but when he came to the fifth week when he became the head of house he told he told ebuka and i remember that day he told ebuka you know what ha <laughs> ha shit is gonna be real shit's gonna be real right now you know and everything just got real you know he said when he became the head of house he just you know had to show them who he was you know and for that explaining to the doctor about why he was always afraid during the eviction shows because the um, doctor you know told him that he should he saw that a lot that most times when it was you know time to be nominated or during evictions he was always praying for fraud not to faint yeah we all saw that and Frost said it wasn't really because of the 60 mil because he didn't know what to expect you know if it was good news about his mom or if it was bad news because of the situation of his mom before coming into the house you know and the doctor started you know telling us how to learn how to receive bad news you have to learn how to receive bad news you know because he went on to say life in as much as we, we we are optimistic in life we want always the good 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 to happen but it doesn't always work like that you have to be optimistic and then again you have to be a realist you know and the doctor talked about his dad his dad was one person that didn't really know how to handle bad news or good news he was always anxious and that was one of the reasons that he kind of his demise was caused by high blood pressure or high yeah hypertension so um the doctor said a lot you know he tells us that this life we are in when, when even when you set goals you know don't expect too much don't just say it must work like that and when it doesn't work like that you become disappointed you become down and all those all in all people of god today i learned a lot i learned how to take care of my emotions you know expecting a lot i learned that you shouldn't really judge anybody you know seeing all these housemates all of them has something that are like they are carrying on their chest or something that that, that has been weighing them down you know, everybody needs to have somebody to talk to. You know, therapy is so underrated in this country. And I think we should really look into it. It's not everything that is caused by our village people. Sometimes, you know, he, the doctor talked about people not being able to express their emotions. You know, they will repress and repress. You know, they, they don't, they don't you know express it and before you know it they say that person has committed you know and that person has died and something like that that we should learn to be expressive we should learn to you know feel be vulnerable is not a bad thing you know it doesn't make you weak and i also learned today that interpersonal relationship is good i also learned that i should learn how to you know um take constructive criticism and that is one thing I've learned over the years, you know, and that is one thing, even in my channel, if you notice, even if somebody drops a very nasty comment, you know, I don't just go all out and start defending myself. Even if I want to defend myself, I try to see, okay, what point is this person trying to make? What am I to learn from this? You know, let myself feel through, feel that, let myself learn through that. All of you would you know, I agree with me that I do that. I do that a lot. You know, I learn when people criticize you. It's not always, you know, sometimes people drop some certain comments. It's not always because they, they dislike Izni. No, maybe because they have my interest at heart and they are seeing I'm going on the rough, wrong path and they want to, uh, you know, you know, um, they might not say it the right way, but they, they just want me to do right by them. And also one thing I've learned, you know, is... One thing I've learned from yesterday and today in the Big Brother Nigeria reality show, um, of course, therapy is good. It's really, really good. You don't have to be 
cray cray you know before you need therapy everybody needs somebody they can unburden to don't judge people because you really don't know what they've been going through our past kind of has a way of defining us it's now left for us to do right or do wrong and again interpersonal relationship nobody is an island nobody is an island you need me i need you we all need each other and again learn how to handle bad news learn how to handle you then when things don't go your way when your expectations are not being met how do you handle it learn how to handle all those things all in all i can say um i've learned a lot i don't know about the housemates that are there anybody that listens to all this and still doesn't want to make positive changes in their life then really i don't know i don't know what they are doing but as for me as a viewer you know I learned a lot and I'm grateful for Big Brother for bringing that therapist, you know, I don't know how much they cost, but I really want to see one because it's really good. It's really, really good. I could see, I could re see myself in most of the things they say, you know, I was watching it with my sister and I was like, Kai, I can see myself in most of these things. The, you know, especially when it came to that Omoshala issue, I'm telling you, the way Omoshala handles, you know, some certain things, he represses it. I do that a lot. I do that a lot and I've learned it's really not good. Sometimes you have to actually deal with it and not just throw it at the back of your mind somewhere. So guys, that's about it. Thank you so very much. I know there was no drama, but sometimes everything is not about drama. Sometimes you have to learn something, you know, if you didn't watch, seriously, you should go watch. It's unfortunate that I might not be able to upload on my Instagram, you know, but you should really go watch. I'm sure you will pick a thing or two. Yesterday's episode, today's episode. Thank you so very much, guys, and have yourself a beautiful day. And of course, if you've not already subscribed to this channel, kindly click on the subscription button. Click on the notification bell to let you know whenever I post any new video. Till I come your way again, I remain your girl, Azina Williams. Bye, guys.